Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So since the release of CMU 1.11.6, there's been a small bit of confusion in the CMU community about exactly how you use conventional shaders and how to activate them and use them over the usual separable shaders that we have been using since CMU 1.8.0's release. Now, previous to CMU 1.8.0, we had been using these conventional shaders which were newly reintroduced or I guess oldly reintroduced in 1.11.6. So in this video I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to turn them on and what the most optimal way for you to build your shader cache is in your games. Let's quickly jump across to my desktop and I'm going to show you all of this stuff. Okay so first things first you want to actually launch a CMU itself. Once CMU is launched, you want to come to Options, Experimental, and as you can see right here, Use Separable Shaders is currently turned on. In order for your games to use conventional shaders, the older shader versions, you will need to turn this option right here off. As you can see, when I turn it off, it is no longer ticked, meaning that we are using conventional shaders. If this is the first time you have ever deselected this option, you are now going to need to load your game. So as you can see, here are all of my games. For the purpose of this video, I have deleted my own conventional shader cache and I am going to load The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Once I actually load my game, you will see I am not compiling any shader cache as I have not already built one. Instead of compiling a cache, my game will go straight to the menus. And there we go, as you can see, I am loaded straight into the, my in-game menus. Let's just load into game and get started with building our shader cache. I'm just going to load this autosave right here. If you are building a brand new shader cache, you can expect to get shader stutter even in these loading screens. However, once you go through your very first loading screen, you will not get shader stutter in one of these screens ever again. Okay, so now that I am loaded in game, let's take a look at the settings I am using for Breath of the Wild. First of all, we want to come up to this options menu. Come to options. And as you can see, I am using a bilinear, always downscale with bilinear, full screen scaling of keep aspect ratio, GPU buffer cache accuracy of low and fast, and when we come to my experimental tab, I am using enable Breath of the Wild crash workaround, full sync at GX2 draw done, and that is basically all of the settings I am using in this options menu. Console region and console language generally don't matter. When we come to the debug tab, I'm using an MM timer accuracy of one millisecond, and for custom timer, I'm using QPC and 1X speed. When we come to graphics packs, I am only using a 2560 by 1440 graphics pack. I'm using the BSOD realistic clarity graphics pack, FPS++ and the BSOD frame rate unlocker graphics pack. I'm using LWZX Crash Workaround, and additionally, I am using all of these graphical fix graphics packs, including the Pro HUD Plus graphics pack, which turns off the in game HUD. Okay, so as you can see, when I move my camera in game, I am getting severe stutter, as you can see by my frame rate in the top of the CMU window. This is exactly what you are going to encounter when you try to build your own conventional shader cache in Breath of the Wild or any of your games on CMU Emulator. However, as you will see, when I finish panning my camera, my frame rate will begin to stabilize as I will have already added those shaders for that specific in-game interaction and they are now part of my own shader cache. Additionally, when you run around in the game world, you will see my game is kind of pausing and freezing. This freezing is not related to performance in CMU itself, this is just your game building its own shader cache. For example, let's cut down this tree right here. As you can see, when I do this interaction in-game for the very first time, we are going to get more extreme freezing and lagging in-game. It is a similar case when we cut the downed tree and pick up all of this wood. In the exact same fashion, when we cut grass for the first time, our game is going to freeze. However, the next time you cut grass, you will get absolutely zero stutter as you already have this built into your shader. Okay, let's take a look at another few things you should definitely do the first time you load into your game. First of all, you are going to want to collect all of the shaders for your specific and different runes. Let's just cut down some more of these trees first and then I am going to take out my remote bomb. All you need to do is select your remote bomb and when you use it for the first time as before we're going to get stutter. 
When you explode it, you're going to get a massive amount of stutter. However, let's wait for it to revive. And when we use it again, we will get absolutely zero stutter from this in-game interaction. Now, if you want to have the absolute best performance in Breath of the Wild, I would highly advise that you use one of Seamew Hook's advanced features. Coming to debug, you will find this pre-compiled shader cache. I would highly advise you set this to disabled or ignored. In my testing, using this pre-compile ignore feature, you can actually boost your frame rate from between 5, 6 and the most I have ever seen my performance increase was 8 and 9 FPS. I have in fact created a guide to show you exactly how to best use this pre-compiled ignored feature. You can find that video down in the description. So let's continue with building our shader cache. As you can see, I am currently being shot at by enemies all around me. I am simply going to try to use my Cryonis rune for the very first time. As you'll see, when I use it, I'm going to get more extreme stutter, and when I destroy this ice block, I'm going to get even more stutter. However, the next time I use this Cryonis rune, you will see that I don't get any of this shader building related stutter at all. Next, let's take out a shield and try to deal with this pesky Octorok that is firing these rocks at us. As you saw, I got more shader stutter when I did that shield deflect and when I do it the next time I will get zero stutter. Let's just move a little bit closer to him so we can actually accurately deflect this rock back. This isn't exactly the easiest thing to do when my game is as choppy as this, but as I previously said, eventually you will build up all of these shaders and your gameplay will become completely smooth. Let's just deflect this rock back, kill the enemy and when he dies we will get the shaders from his death animation. Okay, so now that we have some of our shader cache built, I'm going to show you exactly how they are stored in your CMU folder. I'm simply going to close my game and next I want to come back to my CMU 1.11.6 folder, my shader cache folder and my transferable folder. As you can see, these are all of the shader caches for all of the games that I play on CMU emulator. These shader caches right here are my shader caches for both separable and conventional shaders in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This shader cache right here with the suffix of underscore J is my conventional shader. I cannot stress this enough, but you cannot just rename your separable shader cache with an underscore J and get it to work as a conventional shader cache. You are in fact going to have to fully build your conventional shader cache if you want to reap the rewards and performance benefits of using them. As with all shader caches pre cmu 1.8.0, you are going to have to build your own shader cache for your own select system in order to get the best performance out of this conventional shader cache. You will have to do the exact same thing with any of your other games if you wish to test conventional shader caches and see exactly how they work in those select games. So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, I hope you found this one in some way useful or informative. Now at the end of this video I want to give a massive thank you to all of my new and old supporters over on the BSOD Gaming Patreon. As some of you are already aware, I am myself actually from Ireland. However, the BSOD Gaming YouTube channel is actually set up to be a YouTube channel based in Malta, the country in which I currently live. Now, here is a fact that a lot of you will not be aware of. Malta is one of the only countries in the EU in which Google does not allow monetization of videos on the YouTube platform. Due to the fact that BSOD Gaming was set up in Ireland and originally was an Irish YouTube channel, this means that I have very basic monetization options on any of the videos I put up on the channel. This is the exact reason why I created this Patreon so that you guys, if you wanted to, could pledge to the channel and help support me in creating video content. Now, while I do not expect absolutely anyone or everyone to pledge or donate to the channel, I would just like to take this moment to thank all of you guys who do. So if you want to pledge to the channel and help support me now and into the future, you can find my Patreon link down in the description of this video. As well as this, I also have a Discord server that you guys should definitely consider joining. This Discord server was made so I can troubleshoot and help you guys in a much better way than I possibly could in the comments thread of a YouTube video. You can find an invite link for this Discord server also down in the description of this video. So once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.